Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Monday morning. Hello, Eva. Good morning. Monday morning, September 7, 2020. Huh? Huh? What is that? It's Labor Day. Yes. Thank you, Mia. Yeah. Labor Day today in the United States of America. America. The Bostoners would say America. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. We are all awake and we just wrapped up breakfast. So here we go with a commentary for today's Mass. We're still reading chapter, or rather Luke. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get this straight. <laughs> Maybe I need more coffee. Okay, need more coffee. Okay, so we're reading from Luke, chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. <clears throat> so, it's very interesting how in today's gospel, um, Jesus makes us understand the usefulness or the, the purpose of, of rules or regulations or laws okay so we'll have to uh, we'll have to try to understand today what this means so Jesus on a certain Sabbath went to the synagogue and taught them and there was a man there whose right hand was withered his right hand was withered Meaning, well, I don't know, it must have been deceased of some sort, right? The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely. Because you see, the scribes and the Pharisees, they have been trying to lure Jesus into uh, to a kind of an entrapment so that they may catch him with a wrongdoing that they can accuse him of. Okay? So they were watching Okay, it's a Sabbath day. Let us see what this Jesus is going to do. Okay. Um, so, but he realized their intentions. He realized that, uh -huh, these Pharisees, they're trying to catch me uh, doing something not good. And so he said to the man with the withered hand who was there in the synagogue, uh, come up here and stand before us. And he arose, stood up as Jesus ordered him to, and stood right there in the midst of everybody. Then Jesus said to them, he addresses the crowd, particularly addressing himself to the Pharisees. I ask you, okay, he was asking everybody, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil our Lord is asking them a question in a very clever way is it lawful is it lawful meaning is it according to your rules is it according to your uh, is it in keeping with your laws the many many laws that the uh, the Jews concocted and, and invented based on the ten, the basic ten commandments. Okay? God only gave them ten commandments and yet from there hundreds were developed. Many little rules and laws including the washing of the hands, including uh, washing of hands and feet when you come from the outside of the house and come inside and all of those little things that they invented, uh, derived from the Ten Commandments. They had plenty of those little laws and rules. So our Lord asks, okay, based on those many, many, many rules of yours, is it in keeping with those laws for one to do good or to do evil on a Sabbath? <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day is the Lord's day and Part of the rules is they were prohibited from working. 
See, they were prohibited from doing practically anything okay, besides eating. So, which is not really the, the spirit of the Sabbath, right? The spirit of the Sabbath is to be able to have an opportunity to worship God on one day of the week at least, okay? to try to give as much attention as we can to God Himself in the worship and adoration of God. That's why we go to Mass, we try to pray a lot more on a Sunday. All of that is part of the Sabbath rest. Okay? We rest from doing work in order to concentrate and have the ability to focus more of our efforts into worshiping and adoring God rather than to minding the world's business, rather than just making money. Okay? Uh, we try to focus on God on Sunday. Okay? And that is why, uh, well, just a little bit of a peek here on the habits of the Kleachkos on Sundays. Okay? Um, we normally use our Sunday, of course, to go to Mass. We go to uh, the Latin Mass. That's what we attend. And uh, we try to um, uh, say plenty of rosaries. Okay? In, uh, in, on a Sunday, we can say anywhere from uh, three to four rosaries. And uh, we go try to visit the uh, cemetery uh, on Sundays too, where we pray for our dead relatives and for all the faithful departed. And we pray the uh, Chaplet of Divine Mercy okay? in the cemetery. Okay, and uh, what else? So, and, and that's besides doing many other prayers on a Sunday from the Angelus to... Um, um, uh, oh, we also listen to, to uh, Catholic uh, CDs and books on a Sunday. Okay? Part of our, um, you know, um, way of uh, continuing our uh, Catholic formation. Okay? So, we do all of these things on a Sunday. So our Sunday is like a, 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 um, a day really dedicated to uh, the worship and adoration of God. So going back to the gospel, our Lord asks them, is it lawful? Okay? Is it lawful to do good on a Sabbath rather to, than to do evil? And of course... The Pharisees maybe looked at each other and said, well, how are we going to answer that? <laughs> how are we going to answer that? So since they didn't know what to say, then our Lord said, okay, uh, stretch out your hand. He tells, he tells the, uh, the guy with the withered hand, stretch out your hand. And so he did so. And everybody got enraged with that. What? He's going to do a miracle on a Sabbath. Well, he just did. Yeah. The guy with the withered hand restored his hand to health. Okay. So our Lord performed what to the Pharisees was an unlawful act on the Sabbath. Okay. Doing something as great as performing a miracle. Okay. So what does our Lord want us to understand with this incident? What our Lord wants us to understand is rules, regulations, and laws are, are instituted and are implemented for one purpose. And what is that? Huh? Joe? As a guide, good, as a guide, for what? What is the objective of law, of rules, of regulations? What, what, what is the objective? For example, okay, let's just uh, uh, use our common everyday experiences just to have you <clears throat> appreciate what, what we're getting at here. <clears throat> What's the purpose why we have rules at home? Like we have rules related to schedules, right? We follow a schedule. A schedule is a rule. See? It's a rule. 
it regulates. See? The word rule, rule, is the same root as regulate, regla, regulatory, regulatory. See? The English, the Spanish, the Latin, they all mean the same thing. What are we regulating when we have rules? See? Like with the schedule of the house. What is it regulating? What is it trying to do? Okay? You have traffic rules, for example. You have to stop when it's red, go when it's green. What is that trying to do? What is that for? Huh? Anybody? Hmm. What's that, Sophia? What is that helping us to achieve? What are rules and regulations there to help people achieve or to help people do? The good. Huh, Sophia? The good. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Rules, regulations, and laws are made in order to facilitate the attainment, the performance, and the achievement of good things. Good works, good objectives, okay? good uh, endeavors, both on a personal level and on a community level. Or even in the greater scheme of things, in the entire society, the level of the entire society. Okay? Rules and regulations are there to achieve the good. That is why you, the question of our Lord is like that. See? What is, rather, is it lawful to do good rather than evil on a Sabbath? See? Is it contemplated in your rules as it should be that the objective of these rules is to do what is good? It is not just a question of don't do this, don't do that, do this and do that. What for? Okay? You always have to understand that rules are there in order to help us achieve something good. In order to help people and facilitate people's pursuit of and achievement of what is good for them. In, in the greater context of a community and society, we call this the common good. Okay? The good for all. Okay? So rules and regulations are here because they help us achieve our common good, our common ends, our common good objectives in life. So it is wrong and very wrong to think that we are being subjected to rules in order to curtail our freedom. In order, to, in order to restrict our movement of doing things. No, 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 no. That is very, very wrong. Okay? Rules are not here in order to restrict our freedom, in order to restrict our movement, in order to hamper uh, our, our ability to do what we need to do. That is not what rules, regulations, and laws are all about. Okay? Rules and laws and regulations are here because they facilitate the attainment of the good. Okay? They help us actually attain good objectives. That is the way we have to understand rules and regulations. Okay? And our Lord is very clear on this when He asks, Is it lawful? To do what is good. See? He's, he's telling, he's, he's in fact here suggesting to these Pharisees that you know, you, you foolish Pharisees, you keep inventing rules that are not actually in keeping with the good. See? You just, as he said in, the other, in another gospel, right? Well, you keep inventing rules to make life difficult for people. Okay? That's the wrong <laughs> the wrong uh, 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 reason to, to create rules if it is only to make it difficult for other people. 
right? You yourselves make laws that you do not follow. You just make other people follow. <laughs> you make rules for other people, but you yourselves don't follow them. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but let me insert a political commentary here. Like, this is the Pelosi. The Pelosi is the modern day uh, Pharisee, right? She tells everybody, wear a mask, wear a mask. <laughs> and there she goes, walking into the salon, violating her own rules, right? And she doesn't wear a mask. Okay, in the first place, salons were supposed to be closed, yet she appropriates on herself an exception to the rule that she makes. And you know why? You know why? Because this Pelosi, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for that. It's not only because it's not only because she doesn't know how to follow her own rules. You know why? It's because the rules, the rules that, that they want people to follow now, this mask wearing and everything else, closing down lockdown, is in the first place against the common good you see it is very much against the common good that is why even they themselves if there's a little bit of rationality left in them they they uh uh joe i'm distracted with a little noise uh they themselves couldn't bring themselves to follow a rule that does not have any good in it okay i put it simply like that there's nothing good about it. That's why they could not even bring themselves to obey their own rules. And that's exactly the pharisaical attitude of many of these lawgivers. Right? They give laws for other people to follow, but they themselves will not impose it on themselves. What does Ava want now? Okay, so these, these modern day politicians... Are, are the modern day Pharisees, okay, uh, who deserve the, the uh, reproach and rebuke of our Lord Himself. Okay, so let, but let's remember, let's remember that for our own consumption, everybody, for our own understanding of rules and regulations and laws, they are here to facilitate the achievement of the good. That is the main purpose of that. That is why, that is why, if a law does not serve the common good and in fact violates violates the moral good especially then you are not obliged to follow it you are not obliged to obey it in fact you are morally bound to go against it we are morally bound to fight bad laws for example the law on abortion I mean, just to give a very clear example, <laughs> uh, uh, which is not debatable as far as uh, we Catholics are concerned, right? The, the laws that we have in this country, and many other countries too, uh, on abortion, this is not a good law. So even if it is a law, nobody is obliged to follow it. And in fact, not only are we not obliged to follow it, we are obligated to fight it because it does not serve the common good. Okay? And if we don't fight it one way or another, it will affect us, even if we are not practicing the law itself. Like, you know, we don't, we don't abort any of our babies. But if we do not fight this bad law, then those of us, even if we are not availing of that bad law, we are complicit to its existence. We are complicit in allowing this law to be perpetuated, to, to, to continue to exist in our society. And being complicit in itself with bad laws is not a good thing. That is why we need to have a concerted effort to fight these bad laws. Okay? And it is a moral obligation, meaning <laughs> by virtue of, <laughs> of your baptism, you have an obligation to fight immoral, unjust laws that the authorities might impose on any society. Okay? We actually have a moral obligation to do that. In the same manner that we have a moral obligation to obey licit laws. Those laws that actually serve the common good. Okay? 
And we are also equally morally obligated to fight illicit impositions on us, restrictions on our freedom to do good. For example, this whole restriction of the lockdown in this pandemic, the whole restriction of not having masses, which are being imposed upon us by governors and mayors. This is bad. We have to fight this. We have to fight it with all our strength. And that is why it is so frustrating that our own bishops hardly lift a finger to fight this illicit imposition of civil authority on our religious rights, on our religious freedom. And I don't know why there are not more of us crying out loud to fight what these bishops have so unjustly accepted as a fate for all of us Catholics to suffer through. And they give us all the reasons, you know, of obeying authority. No, 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 this is not obeying authority. This is being complicit with an unjust imposition, with a tyrannical scheme to curtail religious freedom and to deny Catholics of their right to the Mass and to the sacraments. We have to pray for our bishops, folks. We have to pray for our priests and our bishops. Because what they have done, how they have reacted in this pandemic is one very, very clear case of kowtowing to elicit authority. They should have followed our Lord's example here. See? What did he do? He was faced by authorities, right? The Pharisees, the scribes, these were the authorities of the community of the Jews who were imposing on people bad rules and regulations, practically curtailing them to do what is good on a Sabbath. <clears throat> and our Lord must have just laughed at them and said, I'm going to do a miracle just the same because your laws are not good. Because your laws are illicit and immoral. Our bishops might have forgotten their gospel. They might have not interpreted this correctly. But how can they? They don't even teach it, right? So let us pray. <laughs> Folks, this is a very, very serious matter. It has very grave implications and consequences on our Catholic life, on the souls of many Catholics. We cannot take this thing lightly. We are all in this together. And if our leaders and our bishops do not understand the gravity and the consequences of what they did to us. We're in trouble. We have to pray for our bishops. Pray for the Pope. Pray. Jesus promised the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Will not prevail against her church. But Jesus counts on our cooperation to make that happen. See, God does not need us to do a miracle like he did today. He doesn't need the approval of the Pharisees and everybody else to make a miracle. But he needed the cooperation of the guy with the withered hand. See? He needed that man to obey his command and not pay attention to the Pharisees. And the same thing is true with us. Jesus wants us to cooperate with Him in order for that promise 
that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church to happen. He still needs us to cooperate. How do we cooperate with that? Number one, we pray. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our bishops. Number two, we talk. We talk. And we bring out the truth. Because your silence is complicity to commit error. Your silence is cooperation with the devil who wants to bring down the church. You need to talk. You need to raise your voice in opposition to this injustice. You need to make your voice heard by your bishops. If we stay silent, we are being complicit with this error. Let's cooperate with our Lord. Our Lord is not going to allow the gates of hell to prevail on His church. But He needs us. He needs us. His people with withered hands. He needs the cooperation of men and women like us who have defects. Who are not perfect. Who are sinful. He needs our cooperation. In order to bring about the miracle of the redemption of the church. From the hands of evil men. From the hands of wolves in sheep's clothing. Let's do our part. Let us do our part. Let us rally behind good priests and good bishops. Support them. And speak out against the wolves in sheep's clothing. But moreover, pray. 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 <sighs> okay, folks. <laughs> That's a lot of work on Labor Day, early morning. <laughs> okay, I'm tired already. <laughs> Maybe that's why Labor Day is a holiday. So we can rest from all of our hard work. And, well, by the way, no. <laughs> Besides resting... Today is also a very good day for us to pause from our everyday toil in order to do what? In order to contemplate the reason of why work exists for us. In order to contemplate and understand the gift of work, because work is a gift from God. Let us try to understand the meaning of work in our lives Okay? Maybe I'll give another commentary a little later. So we talk about work. Okay? But those of you who cannot follow it later, well, here's a preview already. Okay? Work. We have to sanctify our everyday work. And today is a good chance, while we are not engaging in it in a regular way, to contemplate the meaning of work in our lives. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye for now. Hey, Eva. <laughs> Eva, say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Eva. Say bye bye. Uh oh. Owie. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Have a good day ahead of you. Bye. <laughs>